Hi, everyone. I'm Jill Nov, helping people transitioning to a whole food plant based lifestyle. And today we have a special guest, Sharon McRae. She is a whole food plant based health coach, and she's also a mother of three kids who she successfully transitioned to whole food plant based lifestyle. Sharon, welcome. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. Happy. It, it was a pleasure to meet you at the conference and your kids were awesome answering all the questions. Thank you. I'm really impressed. Uh, so uh, could you, let's start with how did you get into this uh, lifestyle? What, how did your whole food plant-based journey begun? Well, for me, it actually began before I knew where I was going. Um, I started in my late teens. I was very squeamish. I was always very squeamish. And I became aware of the connection between what was on my plate and the animals I would see. And uh, there was one evening when my sister and I were eating one of my mother's standard meals, which was roast potatoes and carrots, roast beef. And my sister made a comment because what was on the TV where we were watching was a report about cattle and my sister made the comment look we're eating that and i remember putting my fork down and saying never again and i never again ate red meat so that was in my late teens again it was i didn't know there was a health connection at that time in my 20s i was a major in biology in college and i started doing dissections at the time and then when i would come home and eat chicken or turkey um or fish, or actually at the time it was chicken or turkey that bothered me. And I would start to sort of dissect them. You know, I would see veins and I would see muscle tissue. And I finally said, I can't do this anymore. So I stopped eating poultry in my early twenties. In my thirties, my husband, I had met my husband married, of course, and we were starting a family and I was concerned about mercury and toxicity. So I decided to stop eating fish and seafood. And uh, I gave that up with no problem. And then in my 40s, and what I didn't mention earlier was that my mother had breast cancer that was diagnosed when I was in my 20s. And she was treated for over a period of 26 years, actually, is what happened. Um, it would come, it would be treated, and then it would come back. And it would never come back in a different place. It would always come back in the same place until finally, and when I was in my 40s and she was in her 60s, it did come back and metastasized. And so um, I was spending long days and nights in the hospital at Johns Hopkins, basically watching her die. And there were a lot of, lot of sadness around. And um, on one of those days I was standing in the pantry, which is where they keep the food for the patients. And I remember opening the refrigerator door and seeing things like Jello and pudding and ice cream that they were feeding the patients. And it was a moment that I'll never forget I've never had one since, and I really can't explain what happened, but I heard a voice, <clears throat> excuse me, inside of my head that said, stop eating animal protein. Those exact words. At the time, I didn't know about the China study. I didn't know about any of this information, but I decided I needed to listen to the voice. So I was talking back to this voice in my head and saying, that means I'd have to go vegan and that is way too scary. You know, vegetarian's hard enough. I don't think I could go vegan. And then I bargained with the voice and I said, you know what? I'll try it for two weeks. At the end of two weeks, if I feel okay, if I, if I you know, want to keep going, I will, but probably won't, won't do that. So I'm not going to tell anybody about this. Now you have to understand I was a cheeseaholic. I loved cheese. By the way, my kids, uh, at the time they were about nine and five, almost 10 and six they were raised vegetarian. So I was feeding them lots of dairy at the time and a lot of not so healthy vegan or vegetarian foods. But for me, when I decided to do this, I went cold turkey and I didn't tell anyone about it. So I was basically a closet vegan for about two weeks. My husband would say, should we get pizza tonight? And I'd say, no, I don't feel like eating that. You guys can have it. Um, do you want to make an omelet? I loved feta cheese omelets. And I, no, I don't want that. So this went on for a period of two weeks. At the end of two weeks, I felt great. I never had a weight problem. I never struggled with my weight, although my mother did. And I watched her, she was a food addict and I watched her all my life struggle with it. Um, but 
I just felt lighter and I felt better. And I knew that what I was doing was in line with how I felt. I always used to get this funny little feeling in my stomach when I would eat cheese or dairy or something I knew I shouldn't have. I always had that funny feeling in my stomach. I would just suppress it. You know, don't think about where it comes from. Don't worry about it. But in that moment, I realized I never wanted to go back. And so I came out as a vegan to my family. My husband flipped out. <laughs> you know, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go to eat? And I said, look, I'm not changing anything for all of you. This is my personal decision. Again, didn't know there was a health connection. My personal decision. And this is how it's going to be for me from now on. But you all can continue doing what you're doing. Fast forward a little bit. We lost my mom. And I decided to become a health coach. And in my training, someone said to me, hey, have you read the story of the book, The China Study by T. Colin Campbell? I hadn't read it, so I picked it up and I'm reading it. And I read that casein, the predominant protein in dairy, is one of the most potent carcinogens known to or cancer promoters known to man. And I flipped out and I put the book down and I called my husband and I said, no more dairy in our house, no more. Sat the kids down. They were 10 and 6. I have twin daughters who are now 19, but at the time they were 10. And a son who is now 15, he was 6, sat them down and I said, I'm sorry, but I have to take cheese and yogurt and milk. They didn't drink a lot of milk, but it was used as an ingredient. Um, and ice cream, we're not having them anymore. And they started to cry and carry on. They were hysterical. They were absolutely hysterical. And they were, they, what are we going to eat? You know, these were their food. This was their food. I was taking it away from them and they were terrified. And I said, I remember saying this to them. I promise you, I'm going to make it easy for you. And at the time I'm thinking, oh dear God, please help me. I don't know how I'm going to do this. But there was sort of another period of divine intervention because shortly after that, I attended Vegetarian Summerfest, which is a conference that's held in Johnstown, Pennsylvania every year. And I had the pleasure and honor of meeting Chef AJ there. She was doing a cooking demonstration and I attended and I loved all the food that she made. And I was really excited about her book, even though I didn't like to cook. I bought her book and brought it home and I started making some of the recipes out of it. I started with the raw brownies and some of the treats first. And then I moved on to things like easy cheesy peasies and her disappearing lasagna and her stroganoff. And much to my surprise, my family loved everything I was making. So the more they liked, the more it encouraged me and the more I kept going. And then I learned more and more and more. Then I read the book, Disease Proof Your Child by Joel Furman. And boy, that changed everything. Because at the time, I brought in processed cheeses, fake cheeses, you know, vegan cheeses like the day or die, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I brought that in and I was bringing in all these, you know, fake things, fake meats and things like that, even though they'd never had meat just to give them more protein. Well, I read that book and I realized I had to get all of that out. And so um, I didn't tell them this time. I didn't make a big announcement, but I just took that out of the house and started finding substitutes. And that was kind of how things went for us. And my, my husband got on board in 2011 when Forks Over Knives came out and he was holding on to salmon. He just kept, he wouldn't give up the salmon because he thought he needed the omega-3. I would find packets of salmon in his car and I took him to see the premiere and we met Dr. Neil Barnard there and I asked him to talk to my husband about the fat in salmon, how it's not really the healthy fat and he did and that was the end of that. So we've all been on board since 2011. Wow, that's great. I. I, for some reason, I missed that you have uh, twin daughters because I, oh. have, I have twin daughters. Too. Oh, do you? How old are they? They are 14 now. Okay. And okay. Yeah. I, One of mine was... I, I did not read the book, Disease Proof Your Child, because uh, for some reason it was uh, kind of easy with me. We started with um, um, Meatless Mondays. I mm -hmm. started my kids with Meatless Mondays, and then it, it's organically just transition them into this whole food plant-based lifestyle. And, uh, but this book, I, I would like to read it. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. That one and the other one after that, the most recent book that Dr. Furman did is called Fast Food Genocide. Yes, and yes. I recommend, yeah, that's a great book to follow up. And I think it's really important for parents to understand why it's so important to feed kids healthfully. 
But I can't imagine that uh, scene you described when the kids were crying and you stood strong and did not give in. Just what about other people uh, at the social events? Uh, did any, how did they act at the social events and how did you act at the social events? Like at the birthday parties, would you tell them uh, did you tell them not to eat anything or were you always there and being strict or, I mean, did you have any of those situations when they didn't do what you expected them to do and how, what was your reaction to it? Actually, my kids were really good about it and they understood. I made sure that they understood why we were doing this. I explained to them. We just lost grandma to cancer. This is a disease that's affected many members of our family. My parents both had cancer. My father had kidney cancer. He's still alive, thank goodness. My two grandmothers both died in their early 60s of different forms of cancer. Aunts and uncles died of cancer. So it's all throughout my family. And on my husband's side, his mother is a colon cancer survivor. His father's battling leukemia and his brother had prostate cancer. So. It was all through our family. I explained that to the kids and they saw, you know, they, they felt the pain of their grandmother dying. So that was very real to them. And I said, I never want you to suffer the way that grandma did. So in terms of social events, what I would do is call the host or the hostess in advance and say, you know, my son or daughter does not eat dairy and does not eat meat. I will be more than happy to bring a cupcake or something to share with everyone, you know, whatever you prefer. And um, you don't need to worry about feeding him or her. I'll make sure they're very well fed before the event, but I'll also send something with them that they feel comfortable eating. I mean, I didn't feel, I guess I have a similar personality type to Chef AJ in that when I make a decision, nobody's gonna change my mind and I'm not what you call a people pleaser. So I don't, I don't eat food to make other people happy and I'm not gonna feed my kids thing to make to, things to make other people happy. And one thing I've taught my kids is, and this is something Dr. Lyle said in his talk at the Ultimate Weight Loss Conference in Vegas recently, that what's popular isn't always right and what's right isn't always popular. So, you know, for instance, when you go to a party as a teenager, you might see all the kids getting high, right? That doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And I wanted my kids to understand that you can be a part of the event without taking place in something that you know will harm your body. So to me, I view eating junk food or eating dairy the same way as I view using drugs or alcohol. And so for me, it was very easy to stand my ground with them. And I didn't have, I don't know why, but my kids never rebelled. I think it's because I gave them the benefit of the doubt. I explained to them, I educated them early on. And then I also started taking them to social events with other people who were doing what we were doing. So they came to Vegetarian Summer Fest the following year and they met Chef AJ. And I started getting them to go to potlucks in our area. We had a, a potluck that was held by a family. So they met other kids who were eating this way. So they knew they were not alone. I thought that was important too. And the third thing that I did that I think really helped is not only did I expose them to the health information related to making this change but i also wanted them to see the impact on ethics the impact on the animals as well as the impact on the environment so i hit them at all levels with all of this so that later on if health did not become a priority for them they were aware that these were not good choices so i think we have to give as parents we have to take responsibility for our kids in that we have to make the decisions for them because they're not old enough to do that. But we also have to give them the credit of understanding why we're making those decisions. Great advice, great. Uh, did you, do, do your kids participate in any activities like sport activities? And were they okay with uh, lack of protein? <laughs> my kids don't participate in sports, although my daughters did karate back in the day. Um, my son is much more of a computer kid than than sports. And um, they're very active, you know, throughout the day, but they don't they didn't gravitate to sports. But they are extremely healthy. They are growing. I mean, the girls aren't growing much anymore and they're small for their age because they were born early and because I'm not such a big person either. Um, my son. 
My son, however, is towering over me right now. And I keep saying, please stop eating. Please, because he eats, he can eat so much food. And he eats, you know, everything in our home is healthy food. Everything in our home is whole healthy food. The only thing we buy that is slightly processed is Ezekiel sprouted grain bread without salt in it. Um, everything else is 100% fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and uh, nuts and seeds. And that's pretty much all that we have here. And so he may eat a lot of food, but it's all healthy food. And he can eat a lot of the more calorically dense foods like the nuts and seeds and avocados. So he can get away with it. Drives me crazy. But he can get away with all those calories um, without having any problem. So they are extremely healthy. We have a vegan pediatrician and he's very pleased with them. They hardly ever get sick. That's been the best thing is that when they were young, when they were still eating a lot of dairy, everybody would get a cold. You know, one would get a cold and then I would get the cold and then I would end up with a full blown sinus infection on antibiotics. Now nobody gets sick. And if they do, one person gets a cold, it's over in a couple days and nobody else gets it. So it's been a tremendous improvement in our overall health. You answering all my questions without me even asking them. <laughs> I was going to ask you about the uh, flu shots and the sickness, if they get sick and, uh, now, how often, and you just answered it all. <laughs> but we do have a question uh, from one person. How would you recommend to explain it to younger kids, like five and eight years old? Any documentaries appropriate for this age? I don't know about five and eight because my kids were about 10, 12 ish when I showed them the movie Vegucated. And Vegucated was sort of, um, it's, it's very light in that it's about people going vegan, but they're not going vegan necessarily for health. But there is a scene in it where they show a deserted slaughterhouse and it is a little graphic. So it might be too much for a five and eight year old. My kids also saw Forks Over Knives. I think a five and eight year old might not get it at all and it might be a complete waste of time. But I know there are lots of books out there. I think it's Ruby Roth is one of the authors. She does a series of books. You can just go on Amazon and look up vegan books. And you know, I think at five and eight, you can talk about health. You know, you can talk about, I want you to stay healthy. And if you have any disease in your family, you can say, you know, grandma, grandpa, whatever. Um, but the important thing at that age, most kids love animals, right? So if you start talking about the animals and how you want to protect the animals and we don't want to kill them and we don't want, you know, I mean, yeah, it gets a little graphic, but it's real. It's the reality of the situation and kids deserve to know that. So I would start gently like that. And also with a five and an eight year old, there is absolutely no reason that they can't be in the kitchen, you know, involve them in the process. Do like you did meatless Mondays. Get Chef AJ's fabulous book, Unprocessed, and start making some of the dessert recipes in it. You can make cookies out of bananas and oats and then add your own mix-ins. And this can be a fun way for kids to start learning that healthy food can taste great. And the more they participate in making the food, the more likely they are to be enthusiastic about eating the food. And the, the important thing I have to say about all of this is that the parents have to be the ones to model this. The parents have to be excited and enthusiastic and enjoying the healthy food too. Because if a parent acts like, oh, this is drudgery, I hate this broccoli, I don't wanna eat it, the kid will duplicate that. And it won't be something that they look forward to. Agree. Uh, do, so do you use any salt or sugar in your house i or you totally like your kids also they don't eat any salt sugar oil flour we are, yeah we are an sos free home um now i will say that when we go to potlucks there are some dishes that have salt in them that the kids will eat i don't because i really i used to be a saltaholic but mm -hmm. honestly now my palate is so sensitive that i can't stand anything salty so i avoid it like the plague but my kids will occasionally eat something. And usually um, if we have a recipe that calls for salt, I'll use a little apple cider vinegar or uh, lemon juice or lemon rind. And uh, I found something that's really cool recently called fire cider. It's apple cider vinegar with some uh, ingredients in like lemon and um, horseradish. It sounds really crazy, but a little splash of that. And they have it with honey in it, but, I, but they have one variety without honey. I just found this at the Expo East show. 
um, in Baltimore last weekend. And I'll add a dash of that and that adds saltiness to just about everything. So that's the only thing we use. We use Benson's Table Tasty, which Chef AJ turned us on to, and a lot of other no salt seasonings, but we don't use any salt. We definitely do not use oil. The only oil in my house is in the bathroom and we use it on our skin and our faces um, and no sugar at all. I am definitely opposed to sugar. So the only sweetener we use in our home is dates or date syrup. We don't even really use date sugar, but it's mostly dates or date paste or date syrup. And how do you travel? When Do you travel? Well, we do. We came to Vegas. Um, what we do when we travel, it we, we look like the Beverly Hillbillies on a car trip. We pack up our van and we bring our Instant Pot always and we bring our cooking utensils. We usually stay in a hotel that has a suite with a kitchen. Um, we do this at least once or twice a year to visit my husband's parents who live in New England. So it's sort of a long car drive for us. And they do not eat the way that we do, but we bring all of our own food and we stay near Whole Foods Market so we can stock up on fruits and vegetables. We pack up the ingredients for whatever recipe we're making. You know, usually it's one of Chef AJ's or a couple of uh, vegan riches. We love Indian dishes. So we'll measure out the beans in advance and the spices in advance. And then when we get to where we are, we just get the produce and fill in and make our meal in the Instant Pot with a big salad. Uh, when we're traveling by plane, we use our carry-on bag and we put the Instant Pot in there. And we take along the bare minimum, obviously, because we don't want to carry a lot on a plane. But we make sure that we know where a Whole Foods Market is or a nearby organic grocer. And we just do it. I mean, this is just our way of life. It's a little bit harder initially to get used to doing things this way. And it's certainly a lot easier to go through a drive through but that's not an option. You know, that to me, it's not food. I want to feed my family food. So, you know, we take our food with us because that's the way it has to be. I think it's a mindset and eventually yeah. we just get used to it. Yeah. And even traveling to Europe, you can still find and not being able to bring an instant pot, I find a way to stay compliant. Absolutely. There's a microwave usually, right? Yeah, or you can ask for one, right? Uh, okay. Uh, so were there any uh, peer pressure on the kids in school when they were transitioning? Yeah, my son, I remember in particular, well, the girls too, but my son used to, he takes a green smoothie still every single day. And he used to have kids when he was younger, he's in high school now, he's a sophomore in high school, but when he was a little bit younger, the kids would make fun of him. Ew, what are you drinking? That's disgusting. And fortunately, my kids are pretty confident in what they're doing and they feel good about it. And they say, well, it tastes really good. It's my green drink, it tastes really good. My dad makes it for me every day. It's got fruits and vegetables in it. I remember one incident in particular when my son was in elementary school and they were having an ice cream party to celebrate something the kids did. And I called the teacher in advance and I, I just said, he's lactose intolerant. I need to bring his own food. Can I bring it with him? So I came with, to the class with his banana ice cream. And I had made some kind of a cookie out of you know oats and dates or whatever. And we crumbled the cookie on top. So he had some toppings. And uh, the kids were crowded, all the kids in the class, before they got their ice cream, they were crowded around us. And they said, what's that? And I think I had made a couple different kinds. I had made strawberry and banana. And so there were pretty colors in it. They were all kind of mixed together. And I said to the kids, this is all fruit. It's ice cream made of all fruit. And they were asking if they could try it. And I couldn't let them because there, there are policies in school that you can't feed them anything you bring in. So... We watched, my son and I, he sat down and the other kids got served and they got to make their ice cream sundaes. And we watched, literally, we saw the level of the noise in the room escalate the more the kids ate because they were getting crazy from the sugar. And, um, you know, my son sat and happily ate his ice cream. And I remember taking pictures of it, and putting them on Facebook and saying, see, kids can eat healthy food that tastes really good. And we came home that night. And I just needed to talk to my son, I just needed to know how he was feeling. So I said to him, please tell me, how did you feel when you were eating something different than all of your friends? And he said, I felt proud. Oh, 
And I, that touched my heart. I will never forget that moment. He said, I felt proud because I knew I was doing the right thing, but I also felt sad. And I said, why did you feel sad? And he said, I felt sad because they were eating foods that are going to kill them. Oh. And in that moment, that was like confirmation from above that, you know, I had done it right and I was doing the right thing and I wasn't making him feel uncomfortable. And I was giving him, I think it's important to give kids that confidence, that self-esteem at a young age. So that they know if they're doing what's right, it's okay if it's not what everybody else is doing. I mean, now my my daughters are in college and there's a lot of stuff going on. And they don't feel that pressure to conform because they never did. You know, I mean, they're, they're nice to everyone. They're kind to everyone if people ask them questions. Yeah, I remember one of my daughters got into some debates early on with friends of hers who would give her a hard time about it. But then recently she went on a trip as part of an organization she's with and Everybody agreed to go out and eat vegan almost every night. So, you know, I think it's becoming more socially acceptable these days. And certainly lots of kids have allergies of all kinds. So it's definitely more socially acceptable. And there's always a way to navigate it. Um, you know, parents, I think, are so afraid to deprive their child. But you're not really depriving them if it's something that's harming their body. You're depriving them of the pain that comes down the road. You know, you're empowering them. You're teaching them this is the right thing always do the right thing oh that's that that's strong yes i really you know, so you your daughters are in college right now and you just mentioned that they some they go out to vegan places vegan places have a lot of oil and salt and stuff so how that's another well uh, yeah that's them. another level so when my daughter went to California for her trip, um, she did indulge in some vegan pizza with vegan cheese on it. And I said to her, you know, that's a slippery slope. And she said, I know, mom, I'm not going to do it again, but I got to tell you, it was really good. And I said, don't go there again. Read the ingredients of that stuff. And she said, I know. So after that, she made all good choices. She said she just was so uncomfortable because she didn't know these people initially. But then she just decided, you know, it's just not worth it. And the next night she went back, she just got a cheeseless pizza and she was fine with it. So I said, you know, you never should just go along. She goes, well, I felt bad because I was the one who made them do a vegan pizza in the first place. And then I was going to get even pickier. And I said, well, you know, I get it, but just, you know, know that it's OK. So that was the only diversion. Um, but there's no rebellion. I know a lot of people used to say to me, oh, your kids are going to rebel someday. And so far they haven't, they're almost, the girls are almost 20. So I doubt that that's going to happen anytime soon. And my son is definitely not going to be a rebel. He's so, he's so passionate about this and so convicted in what he's doing. Of course he was younger when he started. So it's been a part of his life for longer, but I, I can't imagine him ever being influenced in that way. Are they have vegan friends or they how do they react to the uh, to the friends who might not be vegan, and uh, they just keep it out of the conversation? Yeah, I mean they don't make a big deal out of it. You know, like I said, they don't stand on a soapbox and talk about it the way I do. Um, but they they most of their friends are not vegan. They have some friends who are vegetarian, so that makes it a little bit easier. But whenever we would have kids come over here for play dates when they were younger, I would make really healthy treats. I would make black bean brownies. I would make kale smoothies. And the parents would come to pick up their kids. And I'd say, oh, just by the way, your son had some kale and black beans today. And they wouldn't believe me. And then sometimes I would save some out for them to try. But, um, you know, we, we are just who we are. We're doing what we know is the best thing for us. And the kids know this and they're comfortable with it. So it, it's just, it's, gotten to be a way of life and there isn't a need to converse about it unless somebody specifically asks and you know they they have a stock answer which is just this is how we eat and you know we choose I, I, I always said to them make sure that you say I, you don't say I can't have it it's I don't want to have that you know so they so the other kids know it's a choice and your husband is 100% on board with, with you. Yes, he is. But but when we made the transition initially, he was not. Now, he was on board as far as how we raised the kids. He agreed to be 100% plant-based in the home. But on the outside, he would still eat his fish and seafood until, like I said, 2011. 
but before that, he, he never undermined me. That was something that was critical is that I did have his full support. Mm -hmm. Great. So what is uh, your kid's favorite meal right now or your and yours and your husband's? We are huge fans, like I said, of Indian food. So we really love a lot of the recipes by Vegan Richa. Yeah, oh, I love her, but she has oil. But I always I have oil. I just have meat, oil, and salt, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I just dry roast the spices. Whenever she says add oil to the Instant Pot, I just dry roast the spices. And of course, I always leave out the salt. But we love her recipes. I have an Indian red lentil soup on my website, which is eatwell-staywell.com. And that was adapted from a recipe by Fat Free Vegan. All I did was add a bunch of vegetables to it. But we love, that's probably our favorite meal because it's quick, it's easy, and it's all in the Instant Pot. It takes five minutes cooking time. So that's one of our favorites. We also love a lot of the recipes by Chef AJ, of course. We love the red lentil chili. That's, a, that's an all-time favorite. I make it without the dates, though, because we don't really care for the sweetness. Um, let's see, what else do we love? A lot of Mexican dishes, and it, we tend to like the ethnic dishes, the Moroccan lentil stews, things like that. Yeah, the spices, they just make yeah. the taste. Exactly. Yeah. And um, what would be your um, words of encouragement for people to get on this path and stay on it? I would say the first and the most important thing is educate yourself. Learn why it's so important to do this. Learn why you are not be depriving your child. Learn why it's important for you to be the parent and not let your child decide for him or herself because kids are human, right? They have the same evolutionary brain that we do and those brains always look to and seek the most calorically dense food in the environment. And if you're bringing junk into your home, and you're putting broccoli next to the junk, what do you think your child will go for? So I would say educate yourself and then be a great role model. Those are my two words of wisdom. And then of course, get your kids involved in the process so it's not a control battle and educate them at, that other people are doing the same thing. So get them around other people doing similar things. Thank you, thank you, Sharon. Uh, the uh, last question is, I just want you to share your, what are you working on right now? Uh, your website again, if you can repeat that. And I will uh, type it down later in the comments. So the, yes, so your website and what are you working on right now? Okay, so my website is eatwell-staywell.com. I am a plant-based certified health coach. So I do support clients who are making this transition or making it for their families. And what I'm working on right now is I have my own conference here in Maryland called the Eat Well, Stay Well 2018 One Day Immersion. And this year we have Dr. Joel Furman and Chef AJ and Dr. Barnard and the registered dietitian Brenda Davis as our speakers. And we're super excited. That's on November 4th in Columbia, Maryland. So uh, that's keeping me pretty busy at the moment. I also am uh, working for Veg World Magazine uh, in the sense that I write a column for them called True Beauty, and I review safe personal care products. For a little while, I was a makeup artist, so I'm very passionate about educating people about the importance of putting good things on their skin as well as not just into their bodies, but what goes on your skin gets absorbed into your bloodstream. So I review personal care products, not just cosmetics, but personal care products that, that apply to everyone, including kids. And I have an, an article due on that soon, so I'll be writing that. Um, I'm getting ready to, I'm also a Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine Food for Life certified instructor. So I'm getting ready to teach a couple of classes. And I think that's all for the moment. Oh, that's oh one other thing. One other thing is that I run a meetup group. Um, in Colombia, when I, as I mentioned earlier, that we had this meetup that used to meet in people's homes, that all fell apart. So I decided to start my own. And I started in 2011 when Forks Ever Nice came out with 14 people. Today, we have over 1,650 members. Wow. And we meet monthly for potlucks. We just met this last weekend. We usually have between 80 and 100 plus people there. And the food is amazing. The camaraderie is amazing. The testimonial sharing is incredible. And there are kids. I mean, it's, it's family friendly. So everybody comes. Um, and I'm planning out some events throughout the month as well in various restaurants where we have an agreement for the restaurant to prepare an SOS free vegan buffet for us. So I'm working on that as well. That's 
a lot to do. <laughs> I'm pretty and, busy. Uh, like, yes, you seem like very, very busy. And um, the conference, I just, I think I just received an email about the conference. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyone can, uh, can buy a ticket, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's open to everyone and uh, tickets are going very fast. So we don't have a lot left, but they, they are still available if you're interested. And that is on my website under upcoming events. Great. Wonderful. Well, Sharon, thank you so much for the interview and for your time and effort. It was very interesting. I saw you kids in person and they're incredible. Thank and definitely looking very healthy and very bright also. Thank you. So, uh, yes, thank you for coming to this uh, interview again. And I am Julia Novel, Jul Nov, helping people transitioning to a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks for having me. Bye. Have a wonderful day, Sharon. Thank you so Thank much. You with all your work. Thank you. I appreciate that. Bye. Bye-bye.